Raw power, raw looks, amazing. 2006 Honda CBR 1000 double R. What is up everyone and aloha. So check it out. 18 months. That's how long I've owned this bad boy. Your 2006 CBR 1000 double R. So what I wanted to do is just kind of go over some ins and outs and the things I like, dislike. Um, what's happened to the bike for the past 18 months since I've owned it. Things I've uh, done to it and things that were done to it. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. So uh, first of all, there it is and look at check about this this view i mean it's beautiful it's i'm here nestled like between on uh mountain tops there's a mountain over there and i got this awesome view of uh that's eastern hawaii over there oahu the island of oahu you can see the sun's over there it's kind of cloudy behind me and rainy but uh it's holding out right here i got this beautiful backdrop for you guys uh back to the bike so again, a 2006 CBR 1000 double R, the rare blue and yellow version, as you can see. This is the only year they made it, and they only made it in the 1000. The Fireblade is also what it's known. I call this guy Wolverine, hence the color scheme, right? So, uh, you know, I've owned this, like I've said, 18 months. I purchased this motorcycle back in February of 2016. So now we're hitting, uh, you know, it's almost, what, July 2017, basically. So uh, it's a year and a half old, pretty much. Uh, it's at least sitting in my garage. Um, but, you know, I love this bike. The last thing I want to ever do is sell it. Um, however, you know, having three bikes in Hawaii is kind of a challenge. Um, look at this thing. It's, it's just do a quick little walk around here. I mean, it's, it's so badass. Look at that, the blue, it just shines. The yellow pops, and uh, I mean, I just love it. Look at this, all the way around. And I get the most compliments on this bike. Uh, my Instagram, uh, this is the one that gets the most compliments. You know, I got my 2014 uh, BMW S1000 RR, and it's uh, black, uh, and it looks badass. I call it Black Beauty. Uh, but this guy, this gets the most comments. And as you can see, with that backdrop, you can see why. You got the blue, the yellow. Gotta love the yellow rims. Uh, when I purchased it, the uh, owner before me, he actually did that to the bike. I mean, that was part of the selling points for me. Uh, and it's filthy right now. I got dirt and muck and all kinds of stuff on the rims. It's just a dirty, dirty bike right now. Uh, so you have to bear with me. I'll wash it. Excuse me for all you guys that like flawless looking bikes. But, uh, you know, I've been riding it. It's got chain grease and all that good stuff on it. So uh, we'll get closer here, and I'll go over some few things, you know, what I've done to the bike and uh, what I maybe plan on doing to it, but I think it's pretty much maxed out. All right, so we'll go down from the front. So I did like a first ride video for this and my initial thoughts about a year ago. So I've been motor vlogging for a year, and that's a video coming up soon, so look forward to that. Um, but, you know, I'll kind of go around again. Uh, there have been improvements, like I said. So you got the blue windscreen, and then we got these blue screws here. They don't really match. Uh, the guy that owned it before me, he had, you know, he replaced all the screws with these blue screws, but they're off, and uh, so were the uh, the grips he bought, and uh, some of the, uh, you know, the rear sets were like off-color blue. It didn't match this blue, which is, you know, like a royal bright blue. I think Honda actually calls it like candy blue or something like that candy royal so uh, but i love this blue windshield it looks good and it's kind of a cloudy day like i'm saying uh, when it's sunny it stands out but uh this back to the screws i do replacing these probably with just standard black i have slowly started using black throughout the bike um let's see what else i don't really like these mirrors these are the stock mirrors but this one, it gets loose, and I have to tighten it up, and the screw's getting stripped and all that good stuff. So the mirrors I'm looking at getting are kind of like the new CBR1000 uh, style. They have, like, the blinkers integrated into it. I think that's cool. Uh, I do love the third eye here, and I do have HIDs here, and they're pretty bright. They look awesome. And I'll let you all see those when I cut on the bike in a little bit, like the little Decepticon sticker. <laughs> Got to have it on here. It's so badass, right? Um then look how dirty the rims are <laughs> yeah usually those are shiny and uh bright yellow matching the paint scheme but not today guys you know I I i'll take more pictures and put them on instagram y'all can enjoy it all right what else have we done to this guy so we got some uh some things i'll go over now that were initially with the bike and some things after it was damaged not by me uh but i'll show you guys so um let's see i'll go over what came with the bike originally Let's see. Hmm. 
not a whole lot. This little cover right here, CBR 1000 double R stator cover, I do like that. It makes it stand out. Uh, let's see, what else was on this bike when I bought it? Do, do, do. Wow. Not much, guys. That's what I'm getting at. So, there you go. Not much was done to it except for the wheels and the lights and the windscreen. That was pretty much it. Now here I'll go into some things that it did have and I replaced for the better. So what it did have is right here on the frame sliders, it had yellow that didn't match this yellow, kind of like a bright yellow, I guess, like a lemonade yellow, didn't match at all. It had grips that were hard plastic and that off blue, kind of like these screws, which I'm slowly replacing, like I said, to make them black like this guy. Um, it had some shorty levers, and they were also that off-colored blue, like the, the screws here. Um, they were just like cheap Chinese style. I don't even know what they were, um, and they kind of squeaked, and yeah, they were just not for the bike. Let's put it that way. Um, oh yeah, this was on here, this blue tank pad. I, I like that. It matches pretty good, I think, so I left it. Um, that's, oh yeah, so uh, back to here things it had rear sets passenger pegs they were that color blue also didn't match the bike at all so the bike and you can go back to some of my older instagram pics like way at the beginning and you can see the original blue that it had on this bike that didn't match at all uh to include the levers the grips you know the rear sets the foot pegs all that good stuff didn't have them in black and it just it just and the yellow frame sliders and it just did not match and everybody was like oh man first thing you got to do with that badass bike is make everything match so i was getting around to that then i bought my bmw and i put money into that and i was like oh I'll get around to the honda and then one day i had battery issues and uh it actually was the rectifier uh, of the bike in the long run i found this out and i needed a new battery so uh i took it down to uh one of our dealers here on the island of Oahu, uh, not to be named, uh, but I will say thank you guys. You did hook me up. Uh, appreciate it because you did uh, replace everything that was damaged to the bike. Ah, um, So we'll get into that story and it kind of goes where I, uh, my new theme here, where I went with the bike, uh, blacking it out pretty much. So two other things I forgot that were uh, with the bike when I bought it. Flush mount turn signals, those were awesome. They look good. And also, integrated tail light here. Got rid of the nasty uh, fender, you know, eliminator kit basically underneath there. And uh, integrated turn signal, get those big nasty turn signals out of here that come stock orange, just hideous, that Honda made back in the day. And it had an old uh, <laughs> custom made, uh, I swear it weighed 35 pounds, solid steel, Poseidon type Tosi wannabe exhaust. You can go back to some of my older videos. I'll leave a link below in the description. You can hear it. It was loud. It was actually too loud and it was annoying because it was like a straight pipe and uh, it was actually embarrassing. So I upgraded it, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, so going back, um, so the bike was damaged, my earlier story I was getting to, because the battery, right? So I turned it into the uh, place to get a new rectifier. I went to go call them because they're like, oh yeah, it should be ready in a couple days. So I called them like three days, four days later. And I'm like, hey, is it ready? And they're like, yeah, it should be ready. Cool. And then the guy's like, wait, hold on a second. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, uh, do you own the blue and yellow Honda? And I was like, yes <laughs> you know it's never good to hear that in the tone of voice he said it and he's like yeah that just got knocked over this morning by a forklift and you know there was the awkward pause like this is a joke right and he's like yeah i'm dead serious and i was like okay and i was like so where do we go from here because i haven't even seen the bike right and i was like also when were you gonna tell me about it anyway long story short um they, uh, you know, they said, come down, like, it was like a Friday, and I was like, I'll be down tomorrow. So I went down there, and, you know, I was half, like, dying on the inside and crying. I was like, oh, my God, my baby, you know what I mean? So I go there, 
and the whole right side over here. So this was damaged. What was damaged? Well, for one, the frame slider broke off the old yellow one it had on there. Boom. Okay. When that snapped, um, this entire fairing was damaged. It bent the uh, bar end, which basically destroyed the entire grip. And uh, scraped a belly pan here. Also, it's completely cracked and scraped the tail section here. And uh, that was pretty much it. I mean, you know, oh, I take it back. It also cracked the head and scratched all this on the front fairing. And uh, basically at that point, you just got to replace it. I mean, you're just, I mean, it was, I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do, guys? However, they did not want to settle with insurance. I don't blame them because it would have totaled the bike. Because, yes, it is awesome. It runs like a champ. It looks brand new now. And even back then, it looked pretty new because it was in pristine condition. And uh, they didn't want to go through insurance because it would have totaled the bike. It, you know, it's bad for their business, all that good stuff. So instead, they said, we will replace every fairing on this bike for you for free. And I was like, wow. And they're like, yep even the other side so basically at the end of the day these are OEM factory fairings as OEM as you can get they ordered them from Honda they still had some in stock even after 11 years and um, let's just say they were a pretty penny OEM fairings for an 06 bike in the rare blue and yellow I think it ran them probably close to $3,500 the bike honestly is probably worth about between 45 and 6 on a good day, depending on your market with the upgrades and everything, in pristine condition. So to them, it saved them money and kept them off the report of like totaling a motorcycle with an accident, which I was cool with. It took two months to get the fairings in from Honda. I'm here in Hawaii, obviously it takes longer, but I think, you know, they had to like dig in the deep depths of the Honda factory wherever they store these fairings and uh, find these. For all I know, they manufactured them. You know what I mean? So after that was done, then the uh, the shop had to actually replace the fairings. And, you know, replacing fairings and trying to make them perfect, uh, even though they were the OEM fairings and the holes line up perfectly, is not an easy job. Um and, but I did tell them, you know, hey, guys, I want my bike right. I'm not in a hurry. Just make it look good. That's all I'm asking. Make it look better than it did when it went in. And uh, I will say they did. And I wasn't in a rush. I had my BMW. I got my Harley. I mean, I got tons of bikes, right? So I'm in no rush. But I did miss my baby, the Wolverine here. So in addition to them replacing the fairings, because I said, what the hell, right? Um... I went ahead and they were like, so, oh yeah, besides fairings, because, you know, the bar ends and the grips and all kinds of other stuff got ruined. Oh yeah, and the um, the levers here, I forgot, the brake and, uh, well, it was actually the uh, the brake, front brake levers what got damaged. But, you replace one side, you got to replace the other, right? So, one more thing I just remembered, this engine cover. And the uh, rear set and the passenger peg, that all got damaged also. So what they did is they ordered all new stock OEM rear sets, passenger pegs, and engine cover. That's what they also did in addition to the fairings. And of course, if you order one, you got to order it a pair. Boom! They're like, what color do you want? I was like, wow, this is cool. And they're like, we got this. We're taking care of it. So... Um, they hooked me up with, I said, shorty black levers. Boom. Vortex. Pretty much some of the best, right? Got me some shorty Vortex levers. Driven grips and bar ends. Boom. Granted, grips are not expensive, but they're way better than what I had, and it looks so much better all blacked out. Boom. Vortex. Frame sliders. Both sides. Better than the yellow. Going with that black theme, right? You got the black down the middle of the bike, the seat. I was like, engine. Let's just go black. That was always there, a little shift sock. Uh, it helps keep your boot, you know, from getting scuffed. Don't blame me. <laughs> anyway, so, boom. The uh, rear sets, passenger pegs. They're, you know, they come silver stock. And I was like, they're like, you got this black theme going. We will powder coat them black for you. 
professionally. Both of them, both pairs, boom. I said, yes. They sent them to their man. They look amazing. Look at this. Perfect black powder coated. You'd never know. They were even painted. Don't like the rims. Look how dirty they are again. Oh my goodness. So, uh, there you go. And, uh, while we're at it, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of that, um, homemade, uh, <laughs> wannabe Tosi exhaust. Let's put a real guy on there. There it is. Yoshimura RS5. Got the chrome version, you know, with the uh, carbon tip end. I think it looks badass. It complements the uh, swing arm. That's a chrome silver color. Um, there you go. So, there you go. That's everything uh, they added on there. Granted, I bought the exhaust. That was on my own dime. They installed it for free, though. More props to them. Um, everything that they replace, installation was also free. So, if you think about a shop, they make most of their money through what? Labor and installation. You know, you buy the parts, but then they charge you buku amount of money. I think it's like $110 a man hour on installation and labor. Um, they did it all for free. So, and it took them, I want to say, um, two to, well, it took them over the course of like two months once the fairings came in to install it. But, you know, they probably weren't working on it every day. But their man probably spent a good solid week if you add up all the man hours. I mean, you're talking probably 1500 to $2,000, if not more then. So there, there you go. With the damage they did and the man hours they also had to, you know, conduct to fix it. Five grand of damage to make the bike look pristine and brand new. Now, the only thing they did not replace on the fairings, which was perfectly fine because it didn't get damaged when the bike was knocked over. Front fairing here, the tank cover, like I said, this was on the original. It didn't get damaged at all. Perfect condition. And uh, this guy, the you know seat cowl, but that's me, my that's my Chinese seat cowl because I'm not going to spend you know $500 on the Honda one, and it looks good. It did get sun faded if you can see that up close between the real Honda paint job and how dark it is here, and that's because they left it outside a lot in the sun and it faded it in Hawaii sunlight. Go figure, right? So this thing's not that expensive. I'll probably buy another one. It'll match perfectly fine. Um, Let's see. So, yeah, that's what they did. They hooked me up. I thank them for it. One thing I did forget, they gave me a brand new rear tire hugger there. Perfectly pristine condition. Thank you, guys. They threw that in for free. And kickstand. Boom. That's new. Uh, the old kickstand I had was damaged, but not damaged by them. It was dam damaged manually. The reason why is because the bike was lowered. At some point, uh, the owner before me, he had it lowered and, you know, I'm like 5'11 and it was too low for me. If there's such a thing. I didn't care for it too much. So um, I said, you know, can you guys, I'll purchase the, uh, you know, the side stand. You guys install it. They said, we'll install it for free. Boom. And they uh, raised the bike up to stock height, which I love so much more, so much more comfortable. My legs aren't all bent in and you know, cramped. Um, so that's stock height and new kickstand, swing, side stand, whatever you want to call it. Um, so there you go. And I also, uh, what I've done myself, I got a new chain and sprockets. I got Vortex all blacked out. It's on the front too. You can't see it, of course. And a Vortex black chain. And uh, when I first bought it, it didn't have a uh, chain cover here. I bought that off eBay. It's the OEM one. wasn't that much money. Here's one of those blue screws again, but anyway. So, uh, other than that, there's the bike. You know, that's the the man, the myth, the legend, the Wolverine, the blue and yellow 2006 CBR 1000 double R. And I know what y'all are waiting for, the much anticipated startup and sound of that Yoshimura RS5 exhaust. And I'll show y'all the LEDs. And while I'm at it, I'll give you some revving and enjoy that Honda CBR 1000 double R sound. All right, guys, I rode the bike out here, so it's already warmed up. So we'll get some action here. You know, and uh, recording on, uh, you know, the GoPro, it never does the exhaust sound, you know, justice.
but believe me, it sounds amazing. So uh, there you go. We'll get some sound action here. I'll rev it for you guys. Everybody loves the sound of revving, right? It's just what we do in motorcycle world when we moto vlog. All right, here we go. I'll get close so you guys can hear it. God, I love the sound of that 1000. Woo! All right. Anyway, so let's get some uh some light action on here. Show you guys. Oh yeah. There it is. Like uh, some of y'all old enough for Bone Thugs and Harmony may not know, may get this reference. Look into my eyes. <laughs> there you go. I love it. It looks good. That third eye. You got the HIDs. Hope that's not too bright for you guys. I love it. It makes this bike pop. It looks so awesome. So I've gone over the bike. Um, you know, what's happened to it. It's how it's evolved in 18 months. Now I'll talk about my actual review part of video, and it's keep, I'll keep it short because I'll tell you one thing. The bike is awesome. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. So this bike, you know, it was made in 2006. Uh, back then, you know, like everything else when it comes out, it's like high-class technology, best thing on the street. It's got the HESD, the Honda, you know, electronic stabilizer, all that good stuff. Um, back then, it was like electronics on a bike you know and then honda waited until ironically this year 2017 to release a fireblade a 1000 double r that has all the technology that the other bikes have this thing besides the electronic dampener which i don't even know how much that really works to be honest like the faster you go the tighter the steering and it loosens up as you get slower but uh you know this thing is about as raw as you can get old school Badass looking sport bike. I would argue that this bike, the style, still could hang with any other sport bikes today. There you go. I mean, that's raw power, raw looks, amazing. 2006 Honda CBR 1000 Double R. I'll also add, you know, I think it rides. It rides smooth. It's a little bumpy. It's got some older suspension. It doesn't have the electronic suspension like I've said the other bikes. Um, and the throttle, you know, it has some hesitation. That may, that may be because I don't have a power command or anything with an aftermarket exhaust, which is fine. But it's, it doesn't sputter. It runs like a champ. I've never had any issues with the engine and all that jazz. So, um, yeah, it just takes that Yoshi exhaust and uh, it runs like a champ. And I just love the overall feel of it. It feels light. It's nimble. It's quick to go side to side. Um, I will say uh, I've had no overall complaints except when it got knocked over. But everything got replaced. Like I said, props to the, uh, the shop to fixing the bike. You know, you guys did an awesome job. You, you, you basically a forcing function uh, forced me to go ahead and do all the upgrades I wanted to do anyway. So, you know, it was a blessing in disguise. So I was missing the bike, you know, for four months from the time it got towed down there for the battery to the time I picked it up. I want to say it was four months in one day. So there you go. It was well worth it. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed this review. Uh, my 18 months of a Honda CBR 1000 R in 4K. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, please give a big old thumbs up. Uh, and, the, and give it a good old like, um, you know, subscribe to this channel if you haven't. If this is your first video, I got, you know, like, I don't know, 60-some videos at this point. I got three bikes, this Honda CBR 1000RR, a BMW S 1000RR, and a Harley-Davidson Softail Slim. So with that, um, another glorious day on the beautiful island of Oahu, Hawaii. More moto vlogs to come in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this 18-month review. Until next time, y'all take care. And aloha.